Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome to this lecture of industrial safety and engineering in which we will see how the virtual reality techniques we can implement in a in our particular domain in safety domain or particular different domains in which you are working. So the particular lecture will be termed as VR roadmap, the roadmap to create the virtual reality environment or how to create how to know this virtual reality techniques. So the contents will be 3D model development then texturing environment creation and user interface with the developed environment. So for that first what we have to know the data collection that is required for the 3D modeling if you are going to develop a particular 3D modeling of any particular component that is present in your workplace or present in any scenarios accident scenario or real scenario then you should be knowing what are the detailed data required for creation of the particular 3D models. So, for that particular purpose we are uh, we should know what are the data collection procedure or what are the data collection methods that are used for the 3D modeling purpose. So, detailed data collection of the environment through photos and videos of the environment, then detailed data of the objects in the environment static movable objects along with their dimensions which is very much important for the creation of a virtual environment for the placing of a uh, object in a virtual environment, then scaling of object with respect to the real world situation. So, scaling why the scaling part is important because whenever the user will be interacting with the components in inside this virtual environment you should be feeling like this object is present in the virtual environment the ob object present in the virtual environment is the replica of the object present in the real world. So, there should be there should not be any mismatch between the dimension or the aspect ratio of that particular component that is present in the virtual environment for that purpose scaling of the object is very much important then texture of the object, the texture of the object means the color, roughness and shininess. If you are placing an object in the virtual environment which is already present in the real environment, so the object or component should look like the real environment. So, that the user should not feel the difference between the component of real environment and the component present in the virtual environment. He should as per that he should he can work smoothly and perform in sta perform in standing standard operating procedure which we, which we usually perform in the real world. So, what are the subtrait that can be used for the purpose of this 3D modeling and texturing? So, for the purpose of 3D development of 3D models, SketchUp software can be used along with SolidWorks and 3ds Max, Maya software also it can be used all uh, it can be used. Then Unreal Engine is used for the texturing of 3D models and development of virtual environment. So, apart from the uh, photos and videos that can be captured for the uh, modeling of uh, captured as the data uh, data source for the 3D modeling what we can nowadays what we can do is you can have one 3D laser scanner that is a very advanced uh, uh, equipment which uh, which is used for the purpose of collection of data in a complicated shapes or complicated env complex environment. So, if you are going to uh, take the data of a complicated uh, uh, devices or complicated equipment or that is placed in a complex or integrated integrated uh, um, workplace. So, what you have to do you just place this um, 3D laser scanner in that particular workplace and it will automatically uh, scan the um, scan the um, workplace by rotating 360 degree and it will give you the output in the form of a uh, point clouds. So, you just have to join the point clouds using requisite softwares and directly you can create the 3D model. So, in this process what will happen is the time required for the photo photos and videos collection and time required for the generation of 3D models in a using a solid mo different 3D modeling software can be reduced. Directly you can create the 3D models with the help of this joining this point clouds. Next I am showing you one reference uh, snapshot of the uh, software tool that can be used that is uh, Google SketchUp in which different kinds of uh, tool sets are given here like 
select rectangles, then polygon, circle, tap measure or bit zoom. So, this kind of uh, different dynamic components and different last tool set are available in which the certain tools are also there in which you can perform your operation very easily. Like follow me, it is, it is it can be executed by first selecting the path, then choosing the follow me tool, it will auto automatically guide you to what you want to develop in this, but uh, with the help of this uh, 3D modeling. Then move move command you can use, then offset command you can use to create a distance between the uh, offset distance between the two objects, then push and pull operation which you can use for the uh, uh, means width generation, then rectangle are the basic tools that are used to create a 3D models, then select bar are also there. So, you just have to, what you have to do is you just install this software, Google SketchUp software, then go through different tools and uh, tools available uh, on that uh, Google SketchUp software and just explore through these uh, tools and techniques, so that you can easily know what are the ways the 3D models can be created. Like first the simple, simplest tem template is the feet and inches in which the dimension can be, you can given, you can give or by uh, the dimension in terms of meters you want to extract. So, this is the simplest template you can use and standard views, which kind of view you want, either you want top view, bottom view, uh, front view, back view or iso view that is isometric view. So, you can see different kinds of views also in the SketchUp software. So, this is another uh, snapshot of this uh, SketchUp tool, how we are uh, using different kinds of views. Then, uh, by uh, how to create a normal 3D model. So, you just click the rectangle click the rectangle and create create a rectangle here, then click the on the tool push and pull and click on the particular rectangle and drag it. Simply you can create a 3D model of the rectangle. So, click the edge of the wall and move to the right, click the tape measure for the dimensioning purpose and enter whatever dimension you want to insert in that particular, uh, whatever dimension you want to give to the particular 3D model in one of the edges or one of the sides. Next, if you uh, if you are not able to create any uh, 3D models, uh, uh, complicated 3D models or 3D models uh, having dimension, you can also use its online repository in which you can search. If you want to search chair, Morris chair, it will come automatically. If you want to this use this Morris chair also, you can directly drag and drop this uh, 3D model inside this inside your software, 3D modeling SolidWorks software and later on you can add add some dimension or add any modification you want to add in this particular 3D model, you can also give along with dimension change. Now, the texturing part. So, that for the texturing, four kinds of uh, thing we have to look at, look at. First, the base image to be implemented. Suppose, you are, you want to develop the texturing for a particular component. That means, you have to take the pictures of the component present in the uh, environment, means real world environment. Then, a base image of this, that um, component is to be implemented. Then, normal map. So, this normal map will give the, give depth to this particular object. Then, the occlusion map, it creates the soft shadowing as if the model was lit without a direct light source. That means, occlusion map will create the soft shadowing. Then, the specular map, which is actually used to give surface signness and highlight the color of the particular component. So, these maps can be created in crazy bump and normal map generator also. Otherwise, you can directly create this in your un unreal engine. This is also used for the texturing purpose. You can see how the, how we cre created a particular, how we have taken the snapshot of a unreal engine platform in which we created this uh, texturing of a object. You can see four types of normal mapping. Uh, the normal mapping and along with occlusion mapping, normal mapping, occlusion mapping and base images are implemented here and it is connected through a event graph. So, whatever texture you want to give to the particular object, it can be created to the, the object is placed here that means rail, we have created on uh, texture for a rail. So, object is placed here, so whatever with the base color, whatever will be the specular uh, mapping, then your normal mapping and occlusion mapping this kinds of mapping you can directly create and connect with the help of this event graph. So, this is actually a view of how the texturing is performed in a in the Unreal Engine software with the help of this blueprint editor. So, you can uh, uh, see this uh, uh, tutorials for this Unreal Engine softwares, which we use for the purpose of creation of this virtual environment in a workplace. 
and this uh, there are some plenty of videos tutorial videos for this unreal engine software you which you can search search and see how this uh, they are doing the texturing how they are importing the 3d models inside this unreal engine software how they are placing the different 3d models inside this software and how they are doing the soft shadowing how the light and camera position is taken care of inside this unreal engine software then development of workplace environment so how the uh, complete workplace environment will be developed first as we as we already discussed that we have to take the pictures and videos of static and dynamic components these are present in the workplace so first you take the snapshot and videos of the static and dynamic components then you take the data of the acceleration or motion inputs and acceleration data or velocity data of those dynamic objects and how to place those objects in the environment that is to be taken care of by uh, take by obtaining the layout of the workplace you can have this uh, you can achieve this uh, placing of static and dynamic object in the environment then model should be properly scaled light and shadow effect in that particular environment should be taken care of then motion and acceleration input for the dynamic components which is, which is very important like the vehicles or the crane movements inside the environment so these are this this dynamic op, uh, uh, components need some motion and acceleration input which are, you have to take care then sound for the components and, uh, and of the environment sound for the components of the environment also taken care of because sound is very much needed because the user if the user will be interacting with the virtual environment so whatever sound different kinds of sound he is experiencing the in the real environment so he should experience this kinds of sounds in the virtual environment also so that he will feel the immersiveness inside the virtual environment then how the motion and interaction is developed so we have uh, done for a hook movement i am showing you and, and snapshot so in y axis you have to give the input x axis you have to give the input then y uh, z axis also you have to give the input so hook movement and different input action for the particular component has to be given with the help of this unreal engine software so this is the snapshot how we developed the movement of this uh, why we gave the motion and interaction to a particular component by using the event graph then similarly sound effects also can be created then that means fade in there is a property called fade in how much time the sound will fade and how much time the sound will fade out so by uh, different input by pressing which key the sound will come or automatically the sound will be continuing in this particular uh, environment so crane sound you can input so we perform the we develop for the crane sim crane simulator we develop so in which in which crane sound is given and to the target component audio component so you can mod modify as per your requirement so up to what extent this sound will generate of or you want to merge different kinds of sound inside the workplace in which different kinds of components produce different kinds of sound so there is a option also property also where you can merge the different kinds of sound and there should be no interference between the sound creation so thank you in this way we can see how we can develop this virtual environment and how we can handle different properties of virtual environment so what you have to learn is first the modeling of different components 3d modeling of different components which can be done with the help of requisite softwares that means 3d modeling softwares which for 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 the purpose of which you can use solidworks then your google sketchup then 3ds max or maya then apart from that after you develop this 3d modeling then you will go for the texturing of those 3d models to give the real look to give real look to the 3d models which will be present in the virtual environment you can use different kinds of software unreal engine and for the creation of different kinds of map which i already explained normal mapping and occlusion mapping then base image implementation you can use crazy crazy bump software also for the creation or you can directly create those textures in the unreal engine software and finally how to import those objects to the uh, environment you want to create workplace environment you want to create and placing those objects in the environment as per the requirement scaling those objects in the environment as per the requir requirement so that the user can feel the presence of those components as if they are present in the real environment the light shadows and camera position of the uh, uh, camera position should be taken care of in the virtual environment also so that the propagation of user interaction should be proper along with that the user can interact 
with the uh, virtual environment with the help of different input devices which i already explained in the first lecture so the in, uh, with the help of this hmd head mounted devices you can interact with the created virtual environment and perform your standard operating procedure with the help of different in input devices either it will be through a game pad oculus game pad controllers or it can be with the help of this keyboards or different kinds of joystick wands you can use these kinds of devices and uh, apart from that with whether the operator is performing the operation correctly or not the data can be captured with the help of sensors those are mounted in the uh, virtual lab environment in which you can capture the user's movement data and and uh, after that you can analyze the data and different kinds of error in the movement or whatever the activities they are performing correctly or wrongly you can measure also and you can uh, later on you can suggest for the necessary necessary prevention strategies you can modify uh, you can propose those that these are the uh, uh, these are the way these activities should have been performed so this kind of analysis is very much possible by creating a virtual environment so you think accordingly how you can develop uh, a virtual environment for your workplace in which you are working and what are the standard operating procedure you are following in the workplace so that uh, you just have to capture the, those data and create the 3D models then incorporate the 3D models in the um, requisite software for development of virtual environment then perform give training to the new operators or can training to the experienced operators and create different kinds of accident scenarios or hazardous elements hazardous environment also you can create for which you can later on give training to the new operators how to avoid those hazardous circumstances and perform safely the different kinds of operations thank you